Well, let's now talk matters technology, and I'm joined by Paniel Mwaura, the Chief Executive Officer for Skytop Technologies Limited. Many thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Nice quite, to see you. Uh, quite an honor to have you on the studio today. Thank you very much. And uh, Mwaura, just talk to us about the ICT landscape in the country currently, and what sort of solutions do you offer? Oh, let me say um, it's exciting to be, uh, first of all, to be here is a great honor to be given this opportunity to talk to Kenyans uh, and to uh, the global world at large. I'm also very excited to talk about the levels of technologies in, in Kenya. And we are particularly uh, very excited to know that ICT has taken root in Kenya. Mm -hmm. uh, we will not be starting these technologies or, or rolling out these technologies if the ICT level is poor. We are excited. But outside some urban areas, we have a real challenge where ICT is still not very well. Um, uh, the reach out is not very good. Mm -hmm. And we also have some challenges rolling out some of these technologies. All right. Yeah. And uh, talking about new technologies, um, yeah. Aura, yes. um, there was uh, an attempt by Google to yeah. sort of uh, support actually uh, technology companies. And you're one of the companies that uh, had been earmarked. But aside from this, yes. talk to us about what your technology will offer in the Kenyan space and how will it revolutionize how we do our manufacturing? Oh, thank you very much uh, for that uh, question. Let me say, uh, Google has not supported us in any way. Indeed, we have not gotten any support anywhere. But when investing in the millions, over 100 or millions, borrowers here and there, try to, uh, as we uh, uh, develop these technologies uh, for the last 12 years. Now, these technologies, when you look at how we started, the manufacturer in the industry is now, um, uh, globally, is now relying on technology to produce things, quality goods that are supposed to be used by the consumer. Unfortunately, in Africa, we have problems because most of the people who produce uh, goods and products, if you go to your car sector, uh, uh, producing these uh, 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 products without using modern design technologies, otherwise called computer aided design, so uh, uh, to produce things that can be exported. And mm -hmm. that's why you find the wheelbarrow and that box that you carry to the school. Remember that box yeah. when you go to school? Mm -hmm. It's still the same. But if you use these modern technologies, they will be able to get quarter products that they can also export to the first world. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, uh, I, will, uh, I want to focus a lot on the technologies that we are offering. If you look around you, including this building, mm -hmm. it was designed. If you look at the camera, including the TV, somebody sat down and designed it. Nowadays, they don't design using the drawing table. If you look at architects, engineers, and designers, most of them used to wear a suit with a, a patch here yeah. because the massive drawing table they used to do, to, to use those years ago. Fortunately, a company called Autodesk, uh, that is based in California, yeah. and I had the opportunity to work with them, they came up with what we call computer aided design, CAD. Yes, CAD. This is where you design using the computer. And the benefit of uh, using CAD is that you are able to see what you are creating uh, and how it's going to look and even serve your customer better. Mm -hmm. You are even also supposed, you are also the, uh, able to analyze the design before it's uh, released to the, to, the, to the client. All right. From CAND, we also have what we call computer aided design, uh, computer aided engineering, where uh, these are technologies that analyze the design so that you are able to see uh, further to analyze the, the design further before you release to the market. All right. And finally, we have a uh, 3D printing where you are able not only to design you see the computer, but you can also so called minimal factor it you see the computer. Meaning all I need to do is to design this pen, you see the computer, and I'm able to produce it instantly the way you do printing. Okay. Uh, and see if you're able Interesting. to see it. Yes. Mm. And uh, more as we wrap up, uh, talk to us about we have excellent technologies yes. coming up yes. in the Kenyan space, yes. but we've never really used them to the maximum where we can say 
such and such technologies have helped us leapfrog okay. from where we are to where we'd like to be. For instance, the technologies that uh, you are behind, yes. uh, how can we move to a, a level where as a country, yeah. innovations do not just, uh, can, can outlive time and deliver results for us as consumers, solve the problems for the Africans? Thank you very much. Let me say, these technologies, uh, uh, you must acquire skills to know how to use them. And that has been a gap. Here in Africa, in the developed world, in Asia, I've had the project go around there. People, there is a skills gap that has been there. You find, there is this, it's like now being given a, a vehicle, and you're supposed to transport things from one place to another place. But you do not know how to ride it, to drive it. You see now that is a challenge. Technologies uh, require a lot of skills to use it. And these technologies uh, have a lot of advantages. Now, when you look at how do you acquire these skills? Do you go to class? No. Nowadays, to be asked to go to class and with all the time, with all the place of work that you have, nowadays it's not working. Yeah. Do you go to the internet to search? There's a lot of material there. By the time you are through, you are already tired, and perhaps you find yourself in another area that you never really expected to go. What we decided to do is to come up with uh, technologies that will enable you to, you try to benefit from these modern uh, uh, computer aided design technologies without having to go to class awesome. on your own. All right. And uh, the most interesting thing is these technologies that are somewhat uh, looking sophisticated, uh, they are even being used at school. Uh, a child in school now is able to work with this technology without being trained at the university the same way, even the professional the same, same way without going to school. And this is what we are going to show tomorrow All right. uh, uh, during our launch. Fantastic. Mm. That is uh, Paniel Mora, CEO for Skytop Technologies. Mm. All the best. Thank you very much. Yeah. Mm. Well, let's move on to some more news now. And the Malindi Transporters Association SACO and the Malindi Drivers Welfare SACO have accused Kenya National Highways Authority officers of exploiting them by using the mobile way bridges to extort money. Addressing journalists in Malindi Town, both SACOs complained that their vehicles were being impounded every day by corrupt officers at Kenha who mount illegal mobile way bridges along the Malindi Mombasa Highway. The most recent incident involved four lorries that were ferrying sand to Mombasa where they were impounded at Chumani area near Kilifi Town and towed to the Kilifi station while the driver's licenses were confiscated. The circles want the mobile way bridges to be done away with. No. So I don't Hapa tuko na shida ambayo tuko nayo ni kuhusu watu wa Waybridge. Walikuja tukakaa nao kamikutana upale county hall tukakubaliana ya kwamba tubebe capacity. Hatukukataa kwa sababu sisi ni wazuri kwa kufata sheria sana. Lakini imekuwa sasa wakitupata barabarani lazima tukipima izidi na tani mbili. Na sasa ajabu ni kwamba tukipima kwenzi mzani zingine za hapa ziko sawa lakini zile zao za mobile tukipima zinakuwa overweight. Sasa imekuwa sasa ni kama hakuna haki hapa ambayo inatendeka. Na hata juzi tulikuwa nayo kesi paka tuka, tukaenda paka Mariakani maria pale tukapima na tukapata bado ni capacity. Lakini kwa ile mizani yao wanasema ni overweight. Watu ni wapatia pesa. Wanasema tuni makizi gari zako tutakuwa tunakupa kila siku. Sasa hivi sasa imegua donda subu hapa mjini Malindi haswa. Tunateseka sana na watu wa Keni. Ombi hili tunalipeleka kwa mheshimiwa rais. Hapo kei ombi letu tunahangaisha na watu wa Keni hapa mji wa Malindi haswa. Na kuna gari zingine zinapita hapa kutoka kaunti ya Mombasa zikichukua kwetu mchanga kaunti ya Malindi. Na hizo gari ziko nundu na gari hazishiki. Ukiwauliza jamaa mnapitia njia ipi? Wakiwa wako barabarani utaona gari zimewekwa nje paka wakitoka wale jamaa ndio wanapigiwa simu njoo nimpite. Well, over the weekend, Kenya celebrated with other countries the Ushirika Day, the Sako Day, that is, in English. And we just want to take a look at uh, some of the milestones that uh, the Sako movement has delivered for the followers across the country. And we are now joined by the Chief Executive Officer for Mwalimu National Sako, and that is Alphonse M. Kayo. 
Many thanks uh, for making time for us. Thank you so much for coming to the studio. All right. It's a privilege to be with you here. Fantastic. Let's dive straight in and uh, talk to us about what has been the impact of SACOs in the Kenyan economy and how has this uh, delivered value for people? I think uh, the SAC sector in the country has done quite much to the economy because uh, through the credit union, members are able to access you know, credit facilities which they have either invested in businesses, in construction to grow this economy. And also, it has also impacted positively on the welfare of uh, the Kenyans in this country in terms of, you know, providing great facilities to them. It has also given them uh, an opportunity where you can actually accumulate, you know, savings uh, on a monthly basis. So you find out that borrowing, you know, members are also able to uh, do savings and they grow their wealth. All right. And uh, Bwana Alphonse, right now, as much as we are seeing SACOs uh, being... Uh, celebrated across the country. There's also the impact it has had when it comes to advancing credit to the needy uh, market that we have. How has this played out in an environment where we've had interest rates capped at 14%? Have we seen a spike in lending for SACOs over time? Uh, what has happened is that uh, when interest was capped at 14%, that is 2016, of course, the circles are also to go and look at their product, the interest they were charging. They did a number of them reduce interest, which were above 12%. And as a result of that, of course, uh, it impacted on their you know, turnover that year and also the following year. But then on the other side, uh, because of uh, limited access of uh, credit facility for banking you know, institutions, mm -hmm. many Kenyans have actually referred to circles to borrow from them. And then circles have benefited on the volumes in terms of what you know they are lending out to their members. That has had a very big impact on the economy of this country mm -hmm. because uh, these uh, members in circles, they are able to access you know, credit facilities to you know, either invest elsewhere or to develop themselves. Okay. And uh, there's been talk, uh, Juan Alphonse, around the International Monetary Fund, IMF, has been uh, advancing the need for circles, some of the circles that uh, have a, a nationwide footprint to consider crossing over to becoming banks. What are your thoughts on this? Is it the right way to go and have Mwalimu National Circle to be a bank well, maybe two years from now? Uh, I think uh, my take is that that's not the route the circles are supposed to go. Because when you look at the model and how circles operate, there is an aspect of uh, social and there is an aspect of doing business. Mm -hmm. So when you look at it that way, you say that if they convert to be bank, then they lose on that aspect of social. And again, circles, you find them focusing on the, you know, the citizen on the lower side of the pyramid. So taking them to be you know, converted to banks, then we'll be losing the focus of the circles. The other aspect I want to say that, you know, circles, we are the principal which guide the circles and how we are supposed to operate. Because as I mentioned that we are not driven by interest. We are driven on welfare of the members, but at the same time we are doing business. So where I stand as a person, I'll say that, you know, circles need not to convert to banks, but circles can consider investing and diversifying and moving to banks, like what Mali has done when it acquired, you know, SPA Bank. All right. Yeah. And uh, as we wrap up, uh, uh, Alphonse, uh, where do you see Malimu National Circle in terms of uh, the strategic outlook and uh, what opportunities are you looking to tap into? Uh, for Malimu Circle, there is a huge opportunity which is there because today when I look at the membership we have, at the potential of the market is quite huge. And we want to bring this, you know, uh, the teachers and other, you know, uh, people to the membership so that we can be able to grow our deposit and then uh, also lend to them, you know, credit facilities. And looking at the future, we are also diversifying, like uh, we've, you know, diversified from, you know, a vehicle through which we are doing investment and we have been able actually to develop, you know, some houses in Kisaju, 872 units, a gated community. And that's an area where we want to venture in so that we can support you know, the economy of this country. And as a circle, actually, we are very much keen on participating in the four, big four, expel the area of the housing, mm -hmm. where we really want to focus and part of the government so that we can be able to develop houses which can be sold to our members and also the members of the public. And looking at the future, I'm um, seeing the circle, it has a huge opportunity where we can grow it and even double our balance sheet. We today standing at uh, 42 billion and the biggest circle in Africa and uh, in Kenya. So we are saying the next five years, it's possible, you know, we want to move this balance sheet to 70 billion. All right. Perfect place to end it. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, as yep. well. Yep. And uh, 
we'll definitely be looking at the books to see how this will be achieved when it comes to the growth. It will. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Please uh, just have a seat as we take a break. Well, that has been uh, the CEO for Malimo National, Sako Alphonse Kayo, talking to us in length at the outlook for the sector. And he's quite optimistic that uh, the Sako business will continue to grow here in Kenya and in Africa. Well, let's take a quick commercial break. We still have more news coming up, including the latest news from Kenya Pipeline Company.